ticket. Alveolates are a unicellular protist with subsurface cavities. It consists of a group of flagellates, known as dinoflagellates, parasites, known as abicomplexins, and eukaryotes, known as ciliates. They have small membrane-bound cavities in which the alveoli is located beneath the cell surface. Although their true function is unknown, it is believed they are used to help stabilize the cell surface and regulate the cell's water and ion content. Dinoflagellates are a phytoplankton that are suspended on the water surface. They provide a foundation for food webs for most marine and freshwater life. There are also some heterotrophic species of dinoflagellates. Although most species of dinoflagellates are unicellular, there are some that like to live in colonies. Dinoflagellates bloom, meaning that the population has a rapid growth, which lead to the red tides, and these bloomings are a brownish red or pinkish orange because of the pigments in the plastids of the dinoflagellates. Also during these blooms, the toxins are released which kill fish and many invertebrates in the area. And sometimes even man can be put to death as well. Some species of dinoflagellates are bioluminescent, which a, they release a light emission caused by an ATP driven chemical reaction. It is believed they use this emission to attract large fish to eat to come and eat the smaller predators that were seeking them. And as far as an environmental reaction, inter interaction I should say, they have a symbiotic relationship with inhabiting scenarians that help build coral reefs. Because they release a photosynthetic output which is a main food source for reef communities. To the left, you have an example here of a dinoflagellate. If you notice this rough outer coating, this is known as their armor. Uh, it is the shape of the armor is reinforced by internal plates of cellulose. To the right is an example of a coral reef in which dinoflagellates uh, help again, as I said before, with their photos pho with their photosynthetic output. And in the bottom here is an example of their red tides. Axicomplexins are a group of parasites, and many times they can cause serious human diseases. When really, uh, par these parasites decimate into tiny infectious cells called sporozoites, and at one specific end, known as the apex, the sporozoid has a complex of organelles specialized for the penetration of host cells and tissues. They have very unique lifestyles because they go through both sexual and asexual stages, and often these cycles require two or more different host species. Species as in requires two different species to complete this uh, cycle. As you look to the example of Plasmodium, which is located in the sixth edition on page 557, you'll see how ex examples how the infection occurs. The infected mosquito bites a person infecting them with Plasmodium. From there, the sporozoites divide into merozoites, and the merozoites into the blood cells. And in the blood cells they continue to, and continue to divide until finally they can handle no more and they explode into the bloodstream. And then when a female mosquito bites the infected human they take in with them that infected plasmodium blood with, the, with some gametocytes which had also been formed from the merozoites. Gametes form from these gametocytes and fertilization occurs in the formation of a zygote in the mosquito's digestive tract. And from there, meiosis occurs, and an o o which is the oocyte, oocyst develops from the zygote in the wall of the mosquito's gut, and sporozoites develop in, in the oocyst and then migrate to the mosquito's salivary gland, thus repeating the cycle of how malaria, or particularly plasmodium, is spread. Again to the left, this is your picture of the plasmodium life cycle. It can be again found on page 557 in the 6th edition. The image to your right here, this is an example of a sporozoid. And down at the bottom, this is an example of the merozoids busting through the walls of a red blood cell, infecting the blood. 
Ciliates are a group of protists that use cilia to move and feed. Many ciliates live as solitary cells in fresh water. They have a very intricate submembrane system that uses microtubules to coordinate the movement of thousands of cilia at once. Some ciliates are completely covered while others have a specific arrangement of ciliates for their diverse lifestyles. Some use uh, need ciliates to help them scurry about on leg-like structures while others need them to uh, create a locomotor membrane else, a locomotor kind of action. Ciliates are among the most complex of all cells. They have two types of nuclei, nuclei, a large macronucleus and usually several tiny micronuclei. The macronuclei has 50 or more copies of the genome. The genes are not like ours, they're not distributed in chromosomes, but are instead packaged into large numbers and small units. The macronucleus controls the synthesis of RNA and is also necessary for asexual reproduction. CLH generally reproduce by binary fission, and during which the macronucleus elongates and splits. However, there are some species of paramecium, a form of ciliate, um, have from one to as many as 80 micronuclei, and this is required for sexual reproduction, in which the sexual shuffling of genes occurs through conjugation, a familiar process we are all familiar with. To your left, this is a common picture of your paramecium. If a very outlined diagram of our paramecium can be found on page 558. It shows and it or in the middle of it, you'll see it labels the macro and the micronucleus, as well as the cilia around it and in the mouth in which it uses the cilia to help move food in so it can be digested. And to your right here is a picture of a stainer, a freshwater ciliate, which it uses individual cilia along the cell, cell sides and by rows of fin-like membranelles that spiral around the broad interior end of the cell. If you look in as right here, these bright dots are the macronucleus. They run across the length of the cell. And here in this bottom picture is an image of freshwater setting in which many of your ciliates can be found. Here are some common examples of your dinoflagellates uh, of a Pavesteria pesciscita. It's mentioned in this actual in this chapter. On page 556 is a carnivorous species of dinoflagellate, and they feed on their prey's bodily fluids. Plasmodium, as we know, is an apicomplexin that is used to spread malaria. And then we have stainer, a very common ciliate 